I have an original 1976 edition of John Clairbaugh's Fundamentals of Geophysical Data Processing. On page 230 is this line. Reflectors exist in the Earth at places where the onset of the downgoing wave are coincident with the upgoing wave. This is the imaging condition for reverse time migration, RTM being the theoretically correct way to migrate. In theory, we should have implemented it in 1976, but RTM is so computationally intensive that it just wasn't practical at the time, and it looked like it never could be. Suppose, then, that Claire Bauer and others, believing that RTM was perpetually impossible, had dropped the subject of migration entirely and moved on to other fields that promised better short-term results. In this imagined world, seismic processing is as sophisticated as it is today, with the exception that no one has ever heard about migration, or knows anything of its underlying theories. With that in mind, how would you, as an independent, self-funded researcher, convince the world's most important industry that migration, which they've never heard of, is a fundamental science on par and importance with deconvolution. This is not an abstract question, because the scenario I've just outlined, as absurd as it seems, is not as far-fetched as it seems. This is because, believe it or not, it actually happened, just not to migration. In the rest of this video, I will introduce you to a fundamental seismic technology that we would have automatically applied to seismic at every step of processing and interpretation, if not for the same hardware limitations that held back RTM. Everyone in exploration needs to watch this video. It's called, What Did We Forget To Do? You must watch it to the very end because the answer, when it hits you, will change your belief of what seismic is and what it is capable of. And it may give you the chance to do what I believe we all want to do. It'll give you a chance to make a difference. So please, we need your help in getting the message out. When you finish watching, subscribe to our YouTube channel and share this video with everyone you know. Because everyone needs to learn that seismic, when you finally see it, is truly amazing. My talk today is called, What Did We Forget To Do? I'll answer that question before I do anything else. What we forgot to do was reconstruct the wave field. In this video, I'll explain, but not necessarily in this order, what wave field reconstruction is, why we haven't implemented it until now, why it's critically important that we do implement it and how it affects you and what is your role moving forward. Following this video, which is theoretical in nature, is a more practical video called Welcome to Virtual Seismic Reality. This is where I'll show you what happens to seismic when we don't forget to reconstruct the wave field. What that video will prove is that the seismic you have now is better than you think. To begin, I'll ask you a second question that is, at least in my opinion, one that should never be far from our minds. So when I was about seven, my parents bought our first family car. It was a pre-World War II Austin, and it looked very much like this one. The first weekend we had it, we drove the 60 miles from Manchester, where we lived, to Blackpool. Where, in typical British fashion, we donned wool sweaters and played football on the beach, in the rain. I'm the one on the bottom getting sand kicked in his face. The car broke down three times, on the way. Since then, I've travelled over one million kilometres by every means of transportation short of the space shuttle. And in all the places that I've been, the cost of availability of fuel has never been an issue. Keep that in mind for the next few slides. My talk today is about a new subject called wavefield reconstruction. Wavefield reconstruction is the process of recreating an analog seismic wavefield 
from digital seismic data. It's the same process that we apply to digital music when we pass it through a speaker. In practical day-to-day -day terms, what it does is replace low-resolution images like this with high-resolution images like this. Wavefield reconstruction is a fundamental process that is as important as deconvolution and migration. And if not for technological limitations, it is a process that we would have applied automatically to seismic since day one. This presentation is theoretical in nature, but behind it is a question of global significance that only you and I can answer. The question is, am I the first generation in history to have enjoyed the benefits of unrestricted freedom of transportation throughout my entire life, or am I the last? This section is called why I had better be right. In it, I argue that oil isn't going anywhere anytime soon, but our existing technologies are not good enough to keep pace with demand. I will begin by showing you inlines from this project. The data is from a small 3D over the city of Delft in the Netherlands. The data was reprocessed to modern standards and is pre-stack time migrated. Here, you see an animation through the inlines. This should give you an idea of what the data quality is like. As I go through this section, I want you to ask yourself if it is possible that there is a fundamental process that we forgot to apply to this data. I'm not talking about a minor parameter tweak here. Rather, I am asking if we forgot something on par with deconvolution and migration. Something so significant that in not applying it, we have seriously degraded the quality of the final image of not only this data, but of every seismic 2D line and 3D survey acquired since the dawn of the digital seismic era. Pardon the image, but I needed some way to illustrate just how absurd the question is. I used to manage seismic processing centers and I have great respect for how diligent and conscientious seismic processors are, saying that they have all, since the birth of digital seismic, missed something obvious, makes as much sense as an elephant watching the sunset in a tree. And yet, let me be perfectly clear that is exactly what I'm saying. Having said it, let me show you why everyone should hope that I am right. The modern world is built upon and sustained by our ability to move any amount of people, goods and materials anywhere we want, any time we want and in any conditions presented to us. This ability is today and will be for the foreseeable future almost entirely dependent upon oil. Today, the world consumes approximately 100 million barrels of oil per day. To put that into perspective, if you build a one meter diameter pipeline from Utgiakvik, the most northerly city in North America, to Ushuaia, the most southerly city in South America, it would hold one day's global oil supply. That is how much oil it takes to keep the world turning. Filling that pipeline is becoming harder. Much of the oil that fills it comes from giant oil fields, most of which were discovered before I entered the industry in 1977. Most of those giant fields are now well into post-plateau decline. Conventional oil production also plateaued in 2004 and has hardly changed since. This is despite oil prices being higher than they are today for the 10 years between 2004 and the price collapse in 2014. Today, most of the major known oil producing basins of the world are mature. And we are constantly having to move into more challenging frontier areas to look for new sources of production. Drilling success is at an all time low. Success for wells on known plays with direct hydrocarbon indicators is approximately 30%. 
success for wildcat wells in frontier areas is less than 10%. It's been decades since we found as much oil in a year as we use, and in 2021, we found the same amount of oil as we did in 1947. The world, then, is facing the two greatest technological challenges in its history. The first is how do we replace oil as the principal fuel for transportation? The second is how do we find enough production to keep the world's economies on track until we do? We must transition to sustainable fuels, but that transition is not as simple as politicians and environmentalists would have us believe. It will take decades and perhaps generations to complete. In the meantime, our need for fuel is immediate. It used to be said that society is only three square meals away from anarchy. Today, as we've seen repeatedly around the world, it's only one fill-up away from anarchy. What is clear from even this cursory examination of our oil supply is that our existing exploration technologies are not good enough, and they never will be good enough, because they are all mature disciplines. Deconvolution and migration, for example, are almost 50 years old. Coherence, curvature and other attributes are almost 30 years old. Full waveform inversion and reverse time migration are more than 20 years old. These are all mature disciplines and all we can expect from them in the future are increasingly small incremental improvements. As a concerned and progressive industry, we are, of course, trying new things. For example, we're experimenting with artificial intelligence and machine learning, and they may help in the future. But we've worked on them for almost a decade, and they haven't yet produced a significant improvement in drilling success rate. And they haven't helped us find new oil in mature areas. New oil discoveries remain at a historic low. The simple fact is that if we are to find enough oil to survive the transition, we must first significantly improve drilling success rates, and second, we must find innovative ways to discover new oil in mature basins. What I've just said may sound depressing, but it is reality. What it says is that we must have new technology today. We don't have decades to conduct esoteric research. We need answers on our workstations today and it would really help if the answers came from the data you're working on now. So where will the answers come from? Let me show you what we all forgot. Again, let me get back to this absurd question. Is it possible that in our obsessive pursuit of better seismic and clearer subsurface images, that there is something fundamental about seismic that we missed. With that in mind, I'll go back to the Delft 3D. Everything that has been done to this data was theoretically correct. And moreover, everything that was theoretically correct to do to the data was done, or so we think. As a result, what you're looking at is supposedly the best seismic we could produce. But as I've shown you, we all need to hope that it isn't, because using seismic like this, our proven success rate at finding new oil is abysmal. So let me repeat the question. Did we forget to do something critically important? On the surface, given the smart minds that have worked on seismic for generations, it seems impossible. And yet... What are you looking at now? And more to the point, what process did I apply to produce it? It's so different than what you're used to that it doesn't even look like seismic and yet it most definitely is seismic. What you are looking at is seismic in its natural analogue state. What I did to produce it was reconstruct the wave field. 
Wavefield reconstruction is the process of taking digital seismic data and using it to reconstruct an analog seismic wave field. What we forgot is that seismic is an analog acoustic wave field and that it is continuous in both time and space. It does not naturally segregate into individual traces and it does not naturally form a two-dimensional image, not in color, and especially not in a few dull shades of gray. Seismic naturally forms a three-dimensional surface and digital seismic data of the type that sits behind this image does not become seismic until we form that surface. What you are looking at is not an attribute. It is seismic in its natural analog state. I didn't do anything to produce it other than reconstruct the wave field. So the answer to the question of what did we forget to do is that we forgot to reconstruct the wave field. Wave field reconstruction is a fundamental process. It is on par in importance with deconvolution and migration. It's not like an attribute that you use in specific circumstances. It is a universal process that must be done before anyone tries to observe seismic data. Wave field reconstruction is simple, in theory, and quite obviously something we should do. There is every reason to reconstruct the wave field and no reason not to. Again, in theory. But I accept that having said that, it can be confusing if this is the first time you've heard about it. So, let me approach this from a more familiar direction. Music. Wave field reconstruction is such an important point that I will reintroduce it from a different direction. To do that, I will use an analogy. I will compare seismic to music because music is the other analog acoustic wave field that we experience virtually every day of our lives. So when you think about it, seismic and music are very similar because both begin life as analog acoustic wave fields. They are continuous in both time and space. The only difference between them is that music travels through the air, whereas seismic travels through the earth. We record them both digitally using devices that are, at least for land seismic, very similar in design. We then process them using very similar techniques and store the processed results as digital files. In the case of music, we use an MP3 file. For seismic, we use a SegWi file. Up to this point, they are identical in both theory and practice. But then what happens? In the case of music, as we've done for more than 150 years, we pass the digital information through some form of speaker and recreate an analog acoustic wave field which we then experience using our auditory sense. The point here is that there's no way to experience music without recreating that analog wave field. But what do we do with seismic? What we do is create proxy seismic displays that are, at best, low frequency approximations to the real thing. I know that this is a familiar display, but when you think about it, you're not actually looking at seismic. You are looking at color. We are using color as a proxy for amplitude. We do not reconstruct the seismic wave field like we reconstruct an auditory wave field. It is a theoretically correct and obvious thing to do, and yet we've never done it. So, does that mean that we knew we should, but decided we didn't need to? Hardly. Let me take you back to 1979 and explain how this image came about, because I should know, since I was one of the first to develop it. So going back to 1979, I was the special projects group for Gulf Canada in Calgary. Back then, all seismic looked like this. Paper wiggle sections were all we had. 
But that year, we heard about bright spots, and they didn't show up very well on wiggle traces. So I was asked to find a way to see them better. Having already experimented with color displays, I used an Applicon color drum plotter to produce a display that looked surprisingly like this. What I did was take raw seismic amplitudes and through a transformation, I converted them to color. I used red for positive amplitudes, blue for negative amplitudes and white for the zero crossing. There was no reason for using that palette other than it made positive and negative amplitudes visually distinct. But nobody liked it at the time and it was pointed out that I produced little more than a square wave display. But it did show bright spots better and when we switched to computer monitors and wiggle traces couldn't come with us, it became a de facto seismic display and has remained one ever since, even though it is a characterless square wave display. So what, in theory, should I have done? What I should have done is what I did here. I should have reconstructed the wave field. What that means is that I should have produced a three-dimensional surface from the amplitudes. I should have produced something like this. But having said that, let's not forget that at the same time, in theory, we should have also been using reverse time migration. So why didn't I reconstruct the wave field? Let me show you how this and all 3D graphic objects are made. Regardless of complexity, all 3D objects are made up of triangles, tiny little triangles. In the case of seismic, we need at least two triangles to represent each sample trace pair. So we need a lot of tiny little triangles. Do you remember these two? They are from the original Toy Story. It was released in 1995 and it marked a watershed moment in 3D animation because it was the first entirely computer-generated animated feature-length film. Let's look at how it was produced because it will give you a sense of why I could not reconstruct the wave field in 1979. So Toy Story was rendered at 1536 by 922 pixels at 25 frames a second. It was rendered on 117 Sun workstations running 24 hours a day. Each frame contained up to 2 million triangles and took up to 3 hours to complete. Look at this seismic line. It's from the Rockall Trough and in the view now are over 200 million triangles. I'm rendering it at 4K resolution and at 60 frames per second. If I zoom in, I subsample by a factor of 16, so there is rarely less than 10 million triangles being rendered at any given time. So why didn't I do this in 1979? It's because to render a single frame would have taken all the computing power on the planet, probably a month. In 1979, rendering seismic as a three-dimensional surface was beyond the realm of science fiction. I remember my thought processes at the time. It never occurred to me that I could or should reconstruct the wave field. I simply did the best I could with the technology of the time. And that was the best we could do, not for years, but for a generation. For 30 years, there was virtually no alternative to these proxy displays. We had to use them, and so they formed our opinion of what seismic is and what it is capable of. But they are today, and always have been, only low-frequency approximations to the real thing. So, just as we had to develop single-velocity Stolt FK migration as a poor substitute for RTM, we had to develop low-definition proxy seismic displays as a poor substitute for wave field reconstruction. And for the same reason, our computer hardware simply wasn't ready. But now it is. Today, we all have multi-teraflop graphic cards on our desktops. They have unimaginable power and can create vast, complex virtual worlds, all made up 
of tiny little triangles. So now, at a time when we desperately need better seismic, when we need dramatic new technologies that we can implement now, we can have them. Because these graphic cards can do more than create virtual reality. They can create virtual seismic reality, which looks like this. So yes, the idea that an entire industry overlooked a fundamental technology for generations is absurd. But given the technological limitations of the 1960s through the early 2000s, it was inevitable. So let's put past restrictions behind us because we are running out of time. We need to find more oil faster and from smaller reservoirs. And having personally worked with seismic in its natural analog state for years, I am convinced that we can do it. Because this has all been theoretical. What is important is what it means in practice. And what it means is that the seismic you have now is much better than you think. Thank you for watching the video. There's been a lot here. And I hope that I made my points well enough to start you thinking. In 1979, I was a young geophysicist just starting out in my career. I was assigned the task of finding a way to see bright spots better, and I developed variable density displays using the best available technology. That technology is obsolete, and it has been for decades. It is vitally important that we not only replace it immediately, but also reassess our understanding of what seismic is and what it is capable of. That is where you come in, because I can supply the theory and the technology, and I will provide example data sets from all around the world. But it is up to you to examine them, and it is your responsibility to let the exploration community know what you find. You can make a difference. As I said at the beginning, we need your help getting our message out. So subscribe to this YouTube channel and please share this video with everyone you know. Because seismic, when you finally see it, is truly amazing.